Today I want to bring you a message entitled, Flatten the Curve. Flatten the Curve. Flatten the Curve is one of those terms that has been introduced to us in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic. We're learning a whole different set of vocabulary words. And last week we looked at the word essential business. And we just talked about that the essential business of every believer is what? It's perseverance. Today, I want to talk to you about flattening the curve. Now, by a lot of mitigation efforts, we actually, across the world, are actually flattening the curve of COVID-19. That's an incredible thing. It's, it's taken a, a united front to do that. And we're going to come out of this. We're coming out of this as a state, as a nation, and in the world. But in the midst of this global pandemic, there's another virus that's attacking us all. And it's the virus that I want to talk about today. It's the virus that I want to bring light to today. And I'm talking about the virus of negative thoughts. As we're flattening the curve of the virus of, the, of COVID or the coronavirus, what we're seeing is that people in isolation are experiencing great depression, incredible anxiety, uh, we're seeing suicide rates increase, depression rates increase, substance abuse increase, uh, d- uh, domestic and violence is increasing, and so as we're flattening one curve, uh, another virus is actually running rampant, and I want to just speak to the virus of negative thoughts, and this virus isn't something that just hits us in hard time. This virus is the virus that lives with us always, and we have to learn to flatten the curve of negative thoughts. You know, as I was praying about uh, speaking to you about this this week, um, towards the end of the week, I got a text from a friend that illustrates exactly what we're going to talk about today and the importance of of flattening the curve of negative thoughts. Uh, My friend gave me permission to share this story. But about 8.30 one night this week, I get a a text, and the moment I read the text, uh, my heart sank, my stomach turned over. My friend told me that she reached out to to a friend. Uh, They hadn't heard from him in a while. As a matter of fact, Her friend's family members hadn't heard from him in a while. And they asked her, hey, could you go over and check on him? And so she got a few other friends and co-workers. These people all work together. And they go over to their friend's house. And they knock on the door and there is no answer. And they walk in to his home and they find him dead. Friend, co-worker, lifeless. And what happened is uh, this, this young man who has three kids, this man was sober for 10 years. I mean, you talk about strength. You, you talk about resolve. He, he was sober for 10 years. He had a drug addiction. And... Because of the virus of negative thoughts, because of isolation, but because of the lack of smiles from friends, just the time at work with each other, just things I think we oftentimes take for granted, uh, one bad thought rehearsed over and over and over again caused him to relapse. And he overdosed. I'm telling you right now that negative thoughts are very powerful. And I want you to write this statement down as we kind of we try to learn how to flatten the curve of negative thoughts today. You see, the privacy of a thought is a dangerous room if the door is not left open for truth to walk in. That's exactly what happened to this guy. Uh, he, he was in a healthy place for 10 years, but he got in a place of privacy in his thought, and somewhere along the, 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 the line, I don't know when it was, but maybe his thoughts turned dark, and 
maybe it was a slow thing, but at some point, the door in his mind and in his heart and in his life that was open for truth closed. Maybe it was abruptly or maybe it was slowly, but either way, it closed. And it caused him to go into a dark place. And I want you to know, you, might find, you may not find yourself in that type of darkness. You might not find yourself battling with suicidal thoughts or depression or even like anxiety. But the power of negative thoughts are, are pervasive nonetheless. There's a lot of like different ways that it attacks us. It attacks our emotional bandwidth. How do you know if the virus of negative thought has a hold of you? They're, they're, they're just like there's like symptoms for COVID. There's symptoms for the virus of negative thought. Uh, one of the things that it attacks is that it, it attacks your emotional bandwidth. When you're dominated by negative thoughts and you're shutting the door to truth, all of a sudden you feel thin, you feel impatient, maybe you feel on the on edge. It also just wipes out your emotional or your physical energy. So it hits your emotional bandwidth, then it just it, it just gives a gut punch to your physical injury energy. This is why all of y'all are still in your pajamas. Okay? I mean, it's 11:30 and you're still in your pajamas. Why? You got no energy, right? And at the heart of some of that could be the power of negative thoughts. Uh, your mental focus is attacked because you're constantly distracted, because you're running down all these thoughts and, you know, conversations in your mind. So your, your, your mental focus just sort of goes into the tank. Your relational currency um, feels like you have like zero relational stock. If you're like, oh, I don't have any friends, and everybody's gone, oh, you know, it's like, it's all a lie, and then finally, your spiritual outlook, if you have one, your spiritual outlook look is gone, and you're blinded by all the negative, and you're blinded by all the bad news, and when the virus of negative thoughts is left to run rampant in your life, um, there's just this constant invisible finger, and this is the finger that I want us to be able to look and point at today. And this invisible finger, when you let these negative thoughts run loose in your mind, it always points at you and it tells you of your inadequacies. It tells you that you're not worthy. It tells you that you're never, this is, things are never going to change. It never paints a positive outlook. It always points to inad inadequacies and how bad things are. Are. And so I want you to just be aware that you are the controller of your thoughts. You see, no one talks to you more than you. All right. I know we talk to a lot of people. Uh, you know, I've got one of my kids is super talkative. The other one's not as talkative. But no one talks to us as much as ourselves. We're constantly having conversations with ourselves. Do you talk to yourself out loud? Okay. I don't talk out loud to myself. Uh, I, I talk a lot to myself on the inside, some of you guys, hey, if you are someone who talks out loud to yourself, uh, why don't you just like say, yeah, that's me. I'm an I'm a out loud talker. Just put it in the chat right now. It's not me, but the truth is we all do talk to ourselves. And so we got to be aware. We got to be aware of what the negative thoughts are. And I'm convinced that most of the time, I would probably say half the time, if not more than that, 75% of the time, 80% of the time, ask yourself, what, what's your voice saying to you? More times than not, it's negative. You're not typically saying positive things about yourself. You're saying, oh, I don't look good today. Uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm fat. I'm whatever. Like, you know, you're not saying good things, positive things to yourself. But the power of negative thoughts are, are pervasive. And so what do we do? How can we get through this? Is there any way to, to live and, and flatten the curve? And the answer is yes. And the answer is through one word, and I want to unpack it today. Joy flattens the curve of negative thoughts. Yeah, joy. You heard me. J-O-Y. Joy. Now some of you are like, well, I'm going to struggle with that because I don't got joy. Well, I want to talk to you about joy because a lot of us have some misunderstandings about joy. And if we're going to be joy-filled in a bad news-filled uh, world, then here's what we've got to do. we got to make sure that the door of our minds, the door of our thoughts are always open for truth to walk in. And the truth is Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so we've got to always allow our minds to be open, the doors of our minds to be open for Jesus to walk in. 
And Jesus is all about joy. Walk with Jesus and you get some joy. Uh, one of the things that I love about Jesus is the, the first miracle that's recorded in the book of John is a miracle that points to joy. He turns H2O into Merlot. Okay, I love that. And it literally is. It's, it's, it, Jesus is tipping the hand to say, when I walk in the room, joy walks in the room. When I come into anybody's mind, heart, life, living room, joy walks in. It's why uh, the Apostle Paul talks about if you walk with Jesus, the result that will happen is love, joy. It's like the second one that he lists as a result of walking with Jesus. So here's the thing. I want to give you two thoughts to mitigate the virus of negative thinking. Okay, Two, two thoughts to mitigate the virus of negative thoughts or negative thinking in your life. I, I, want, to, I want to give you two thoughts that kind of knock on the door. Maybe today you're closed off and you haven't let truth in. Maybe you find yourself in a dark place, an overwhelmed place. Maybe just worn out. That's where I am. I'm just tired of COVID-19. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of not being able to hug people and give people high fives. I'm tired of not being able to see your faces. And I'm just like, man, I want to let the door of truth to be opened up in my mind. And here's the first statement. I want you to write this down. Okay, Joy is the result of walking with Jesus, not a requirement. See, we got to understand joy if we're going to walk in joy. And joy is a result of walking with Jesus. It's not a, it's not a requirement. Okay, uh, Some people have the idea that joy is, is like something that you have to have if you are a good Christian. And so we have this mindset that if we don't always have joy, if we're not always happy and peppy and bursting with love and joy, happy and pe like we feel, oh man, I'm just not a good Christian. Did I just scare you? I just scared you. You're like, what was that? That was a joy-filled moment is what that was. If you feel... Like you've always got to like, ah, oh, man, I got to feel it. Then you misunderstand joy. Jo joy is not something like you, you wake up and build up. Right. Joy is not something that you can muster up yourselves. I mean, I know that some of us have experienced heartbreaking moments, moments like my friend this week heartbreaking, gut-wrenching. I was texting her this this morning and another one of the co-workers that comes to church here, uh, I was texting him this morning and they're still heartbroken. I mean heartbroken, gut-wrenching moments. We've experienced moments like that that break our hearts, that bring us to our knees. And when we go through seasons like that, hard times like that, we shouldn't say, well, I'm not full of laughter and I don't feel happy right now. So I just must not be a good Christian. You see, that's where the enemy is trying to attack you. And some of you right now, because, you know, this whole COVID crisis isn't so much for most of us what it's caused in us. It's what it's revealed to us about us. That's a bother. And I don't know. There are things in my life that I'm like, I don't like that that's being revealed. You know, anybody else? And what the enemy would love to do is to come and point that invisible finger and say, you're not joy-filled, so you don't trust God. And you're not joy-filled, so you're not a good Christian. Listen, joy is something that comes to us and develops in us when we're walking with God. That's why Jesus uses this language in John chapter 15. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. Here it is. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So, so what is Jesus talking about? This word abide, it's the idea, uh, Abby, of, of sheltering in place with Jesus. Uh, there's a term we are very familiar with. Like It's staying at home with Jesus. Jesus saying, hey, listen, unless you shelter in place with me, joy is going to be absent. 
And I think some of us only shelter in place when things get hard. But Jesus wants to invite you into a life where he is with you the full range of your emotions, the full range of your dysfunction, my dysfunction, the full range of good days and bad days. He says, if you will abide in me, if you'll shelter in place with me, then what's going to happen is inside of you, something is going to develop that's not of you. It's of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God in this season and in every season wants to produce in you things that give you abundant life. Things that give you strength and power. Things that would snap the head of your neighbors and, and your co-workers that go, oh my gosh, there's something different about him. Something different. See, the, the Christian life is a marked life. The Christian life is a life that stands out in a dark world, not because of us, but because of God and because of what God is doing in us. I love what Psalm 91 says. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. There's that language again. He dwells in shelter. He who shelters in place with the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You go, man, I, how do I abide? You dwell. You dwell, you decide that, you know what, I'm going to walk with Jesus. And, and dwelling and abiding is not found in coming to church just once a week and that being the, 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 the some, um, you know, some uh, amount of your walk with God. And it's not even just even having a devotional every day. Sheltering with Jesus, abiding in Jesus is walking with him every moment, every minute. Being aware of his presence, welcoming his presence. Angie, you ever had like a guest come stay with you? You know, maybe an extended time. I know you had a friend come just a few months ago. We got, we got to meet him. He, he stayed for quite a while, right? And I know anytime you have a guest come and stay at your house, it takes a little getting used to. Uh, maybe the first day or the first night, you know, you're not used to hearing their voice in your house. Maybe you walk out in your underwear and you're like, oh my gosh, awkward moment, right? You just kind of get used, you have to get used to their presence. But over time, week goes, two weeks go by, and you sort of get used to their presence. This is kind of the idea, and I think this is what we're all trying to get used to in walking with Jesus. He's never not with us. We just need to be aware. We need to get used to hearing his voice in our house. We need to get used to and recognize, and not just recognizing it, but deferring to it. Not just hearing it, but us coming up under it and saying, God, lead me in your ways. Help me, direct me, help me in this. And in our emotional moments, in our mistakes, what you're going to find is you're going to find a God that wants to lead you into a path of, of a life of abundance. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Isaiah 26.3 again says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. So as you push in this a little bit more further, what this means about joy is joy is not something that you can command, purchase, or even arrange. You don't wake up and arrange joy. You don't wake up and just go, you know what? I'm going to be happy and peppy and bursting with love today. You don't just wake up and do, man, if you do that, you're annoying. Just, ah, ah, how annoying is this? Woo, I'm going to do it. You know, no, no, that's not, that's not joy. You, you don't work up joy. I like, I like how my man um, uh, Eugene Peterson says. He says, joy is what God gives, not what we work up. It's something that he gives us, not something that, that we do in and of ourselves. See, so joy is not just some feeling you try to bring up. Joy is the result of knowing that God is faithful. You know, one of the terms we use when we're talking about somebody who has a history, we say, uh, Pace, he's got history. He's got a history. A lot of times we say it in a negative way. Right. We've got to watch out for him. We've got to watch out for her. She's got a history. Well, can I tell you something else that has a history? Joy has a history. Right. You go, where do I find joy? You find joy in the history of God's faithfulness. You find joy in the history of his steadfastness. You find joy in the history of how he's provided for you. You find joy in the history that to this moment, guess what? You have a pulse and you're breathing, and that means up to this moment, God has sustained you. 
And if you're still alive, you still have purpose. So there's a history there. And I want you to see this. Joy has a history, so it means it has a past. And so there's times in my life in the present that I really struggle just like you. The, the, uh, the attack of the virus of, of, of negative thoughts uh, come bombarding my mind. And it's in these moments, here's what you have to learn to do, I'm learning to do, is I have to go historical on those negative thoughts. Not hysterical, historical. And I have to remind my mind, what do I got to do? I got to let the door of truth open. And I got to remind my mind, no, 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 no. Uh, I got to take every thought captive is what the Bible says. And I got to place it under the obedience of Christ. And so what that means is, hey, negative out, truth in. Okay, I've got I've to come in and let that truth um, evade, invade the, the negative part of my mind. I've got to remind my mind, no, what you're talking about, you, what you're telling me in, in the present is not true about my past. It's not true. You're telling me that I have to fear my future. You're telling me that i got to freak out right now about how my bills are going to get paid. You're telling me i got to worry uh, like crazy about all these things, but my past says God's got me. So my past is where I find my joy because my past shows God's faithfulness and his steadfastness. And not only does joy have a history in the past it, that sustains you in the present, joy also has a future. Because you can look back in the rearview mirror of your life. We talked about this last week. You can look back over the rear view, in the rearview mirror of your life and you can see that God has never forsaken you. He's never left you. He's always by your side. Always there. And so you can anticipate that for your future. And I want to speak that into your life right now. You can anticipate God providing. You can anticipate God not leaving your side. Hey, listen. You are going to get through this. Yeah, you're going to make it. It's going to be okay. God has got this. He has not stepped off his throne. He still reigns and rules faithfully and sovereignly over all of his creation. Second statement, and we're going to bring this to a close. Second truth that will help mitigate the virus of negative thoughts is this. Joy is not normal until it becomes your normal. Joy is not normal until it becomes your normal. Listen, nothing normal about joy. Okay, it's just not. Why? Because it's supernatural. It's not natural. You know what natural is? Y'all going to make me lose my mind up in here, right? That's what's natural. We all have had moments like that. You're like, if I have to see you up, this, up close this much for one more minute in my home, y'all are driving me crazy, right? Like my, my, my daughter, I said this last week, my, my daughter, uh, we overheard her talking to one of her friends on FaceTime, and she was like, I can't wait till this is over so I don't have to be around my family so much. I'm like, wow, take a shot. And you know, my, my daughter's the sweetest person on this planet, you know? I mean, that's just the truth. But listen, we kind of all feel that way. That's a natural response you know that's an honest response but a spiritual response you know is what this man God's got this a, a spiritual response comes from a place where you may feel like you're in a prison but all of a sudden you find yourself praising and a spiritual response is what happened to Paul Paul was in a prison when he wrote the lion's share of the, 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 the letters to the epistles. I mean, the, 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 the letter to Philippians, uh, to Philippi, uh, the book of Philippians. Let me say it out right. Um, he wrote this probably chained to a Roman soldier. Okay, and out of it, what does he say? Look at it in Philippians 4. We won't read the whole thing, but four cha uh, chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say what? Rejoice. That sounds like joy to me. Probably didn't feel like it. But he says, you know what? I'm going to rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. This just sounds like a rhythm of prayer to me. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, here it is, let the truth come in. In. Don't let the negativity stay in without the door of truth opening up whatever's true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there's any excellence, what? If there's anything 
to give praise. Think about what? These things. And then I love how he wraps it up in verse 9. He says, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. In other words, Paul's like, hey, I'm like you. I'm trying to flesh this out. But I'm telling you right now, even in my suffering, I've found joy. Uh, Good times, bad times, I've learned to walk in joy. And he says, here it is, practice these things. Again, joy is a determination to walk to the Father and to abide in him. You have to make a decision, though. Joy doesn't just show up at your door. Joy is found in abiding. And so as as we close, I want to help you with with a mental image of of coming to your Father, of of allowing yourself to to be embraced by his strength and his love. When when I was a little boy, one of the... um, sleeping, you know, go-to-bed routines that, that I had, and all kids have go-to-bed routines, like my, my, my seven-year-old, uh, every night I go up and I sing to her two songs, and uh, while I'm singing two songs to her, I, you know, draw on her face and try to put her to sleep, you know. Uh, when I was little, one of the routines that I have with my father is I would walk over to him when it was time for bed where he was sitting in his chair. And he would grab a hold of my arms, and he would lift me up, and he'd just begin to bench press me, you know. He would just lift me high. I could, just, I could smell him right now, you know, like that old spice or polo, whatever he used to wear, you know. And, uh, and he, would, he, would, he would bring me down, and, and my face would rub up against his face, and then he would lift me back up. And, man, I, I just know it was just great moments of joy, and I would laugh, and, and I felt uh, secure in those moments. I felt confidence in those moments. I, I was joy-filled in those moments. And, and you know, I, most of you know I lost my father a few years ago, and I still find myself at times in sorrow about that, you know. It, and when I find myself in sorrow, what do I got to do? I, I got to make a decision to come to my father, my heavenly father, and get the right perspective and let joy come in. Let joy walk in the room. And here's what I know to be true. I'll spend more time with my Father in heaven than I ever spent on here on earth. You know? And so all of a sudden, what I feel is my Heavenly Father grabs a hold of my arms. And He lifts me high. And He brings me close. And just in closing, God's closeness, His nearness is your good. And He wants to grab a hold of you today. He, he wants you to have joy today and joy is found joy is found in leaning in to him joy is found in in in, in taking an intentional step and and saying god today i'm full of sorrow i'm full of anxiety i'm 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 full of i'm just i'm at unrest and and if you'll come to him in the full range of that emotion, what you're going to find is that he's forever faithful and he wants to draw you close. Psalm 119.11 says, Your testimony are my heritage forever, for they are the what? The joy of my heart. Testimony, law, love, word. Listen, I'm going to walk in your word, God, and I'm going to walk in your ways. And that's going to be the heritage. That's going to be the, 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 the staple of my life. And because of it, I'm going to have what? I'm going to have joy. Psalm 35, weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I know that this message is for every single one of us today. And Hunter, if you're watching right now, God is close. And I know that you're all kinds of confused. And you got a lot of questions. But Hunter, you can walk to your Father, your Heavenly Father. And He wants to bring light and truth. And yes, even in this dark week that you're having, He can bring you joy. It's a joy that won't just sustain you, but will give you a supernatural strength in perspective. I know that all of us need that perspective and I want to give every single one of us a moment where we lean into God and we open up our minds and let truth to come in. Why don't you bow your heads and close your eyes today. I know there's even people up here on the platform with me, our worship team, 
There are people here in this room with me right now that need a, a shift of perspective and a jolt of joy. They need to get their eyes on Jesus. They need to, to come to the Father and let him bench press them. They need to feel the strength of his arms and the goodness of his closeness. So Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would give us fresh perspective. Heavenly I, Father, I pray right now that you will help us to remember that you are mighty to save, that you are faithful for all generations. God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. I, I pray right now that we can lean in to how you have been faithful to us in the past and that gives us joy for the present and we can anticipate it for the future. God, help us to remember the history of your love for not just us, but all mankind, your love for all of humanity and for people who call you their God. God, you're so faithful. And Father, I pray you would do only what you can do right now. Father, fill them with joy right now in the name of Jesus. Fill them with joy. Fill them with joy. Change their perspective. Give them strength. Give them perseverance. God, lift their heads today. Father, help them uh, to allow hope to walk in. Help them for, to allow light to walk in. Help them right now in this moment to let the truth walk in because those who are walking in truth are free. And we're free indeed. And I claim that over every situation today. In Jesus' name. Hey, listen, as we wrap up our time together today, I know that some of you in this season, you feel very empty. You've been invited to join us on Church Online. You're not typically someone who goes to church, or maybe you used to go to church and you walked away because of something that bad that happened. You didn't have an answer for it. It rocked your faith. Whatever it may be, you feel far from God. And here's the great news. You're surrounded by people virtually who have a passion for people who are far from God. And today, we want to give you the opportunity to give your heart to God. We want to give you an opportunity to be rescued, to be found in Him, to be forgiven, to have, to have this joy that we're talking about. And listen, this is not some like, you know, uh, out there theology of, oh man, I just got to tap into the inner good of the universe. No, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and, and it only comes through Him. Life only comes through Him. And so if you want life, if you want to stop feeling empty, if you want to tap into things like joy, it's one of the many things, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, all of these things come in walking and sheltering in place with Jesus. If you want that today, I want to pray with you all across uh, our, our, our homes and in our bedrooms, wherever you find yourself today, why don't you bow your heads and close your eyes. We're going to pray this prayer together. Let's all pray this out loud. Say, Heavenly Father, I know my sin separates me from you, and I want to shelter in place with you. I don't know what to do with my sin. God, I'm self-destructing. And so I cry out to you. I give you my heart. And to the best of my ability, I believe that Jesus died on a cross and rose again so that I could be forgiven and be set free. So God, I come to you right now and I let truth walk in. Invade my life. God, give me joy. Give me peace. Take control of my life and change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, right now, I want you to raise your hand. Let us know that you gave your life to Jesus. You prayed that prayer. Maybe type it in the chat. I'm giving my life to Jesus. Uh, whatever platform you are in, we want to help you with next steps. It's so critical, okay? This is just the beginning, and it's just critical uh, that we, we know that you prayed this prayer. And at some point, you got to come out with it, okay? Because what the devil would want you to do is to keep it quiet and, and keep you isolated. No, this is about you opening the doors of your mind and your heart forever to truth. And we need each other for that, okay? We need each other, not just in this season, but for the seasons to come. And we want to walk with you in faith, okay?